Hi everyone, welcome to the lightning lecture for Xamarin University on creating custom controls using Xamarin Forms. My name is Glenn Stevens, a senior content developer for Microsoft and part of the Xamarin University team. And what we'll be looking at today is how you can create reusable controls in Xamarin Forms without the need for renderers or effects. And often when Xamarin Forms developers think about controls, they're often referring to creating native controls for Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android, and UWP, and then creating a corresponding Xamarin Forms control and exposing it through renderers. Now, of course, you can still do that, but there's a lot of things that you can do easily to make your controls more modular and reusable within your apps without the need for renderers. Now, we're going to start with a very simple control, an image button, which is something, of course, many of us would like to use. And then we'll finish with a look at using the framework Skiersharp and see how to use this framework to create cross-platform graphically rich components. So if you've been working with Xamarin Forms for any length of time, you might have created your own customized controls using either renderers or effects. Maybe you haven't, and certainly that's OK too. So writing custom renderers is done when you want to add native controls into your applications and you'd often use effects to augment existing controls with some native features. But a lot of times what you may want to do is have a control that combines controls together and potentially have that control as something that can be reused within your application or even a suite of applications. And then for that purpose you may not need to work at the native level. So if you're coming from a Windows world then you might have already come across something like a user control that has a similar purpose. Now you can see on the screen here a few examples of controls that are all created using Xamarin Forms without renderers or effects. So we have an image button, which consists of a Xamarin Forms label and an image embedded in a frame control. We also have a time selection control, which is really just a grid subclass with labels using spans to easily create different styles of text. And lastly, we have an example using the Skiersharp framework, which is an amazing way of creating rich graphically cross-platform displays. And in order to create these controls, we just need to bring the information together and understand some of the techniques involved. Now, one of the things that you'll define is that when you're creating these composite controls, then you'll need a layout to display the controls. Now, with the exception of the Skier Sharp example, each of the controls was just using a Xamarin Forms layout to host the other controls. But it's also a good idea to choose a layout that's suitable for the control that you're creating. And often you'll create single layouts to host the controls. The stack layout and the grid are really good examples here, or good choices for that matter, with the grid being the most flexible where you're creating controls that you can easily position over the top of other controls. And that creates some good visual effects. So for example, you might have some labels and some buttons within the grid, but you also might have a, an image that's situated behind taking up the full width and full height of the grid. Now, of course, you can use the absolute layout and relative layout, but these are often more work to get the same effect. And most displays that you'll want to create, you'll find that you could achieve with just the grid by thinking about where the cells are positioned. And let's start by creating a simple control, an image button. And we're going to go through the process of creating the control, exposing the properties so they can be configured. And we'll also show you how to expose the properties from the created control, such as the label, to the outer control and then we'll finish off the control by adding events and commands. Now the easiest way to work with the controls or to create your own custom control is to make a content view. Now a content view is very similar to a content page. In fact you've probably seen that the template as you create a new page. If I select add new file you can see here I've got my content page templates at the top. Just below that I've got the content view and content view XAML. Now, like the content page, the content view has a single property content, which is just a single control that has to be assigned. Now, in this way, we can create the interface that we want. Like most interfaces, it's going to involve some tweaking to get it right. But once you've got it there, you can start to work with it. And of course, using tools like the XAML Previewer or the Live Player will really help you get the interface together a lot sooner. So try and use those tools just to get your controls visualization right. Now you can see on my screen here, I've already got the layout for my control in place. I've got my frame, and my frame is going to essentially give the outline of a button. Inside that frame is going to be a stack layout, which will hold the image that I want to use as well as the label. Now it's the image and the label that we'll be using from within our code behind in order to essentially proxy the properties from the control to these inner controls, the label and the image. 
Now in order to have an image source and text populate those inner controls, we need to create bindable properties within the content view. So I'm going to switch back to the code behind. Now you might have created a bindable property in the past if you've created a custom renderer. If you haven't, that's okay, we'll go through it now. But we're going to need to create a bindable property essentially to proxy the properties on the content view to the inner control. So here I've got my bindable property. This is going to be for the text on my button. You can see here I've got the button text property. This is a static on my image button type. And it's really just used as a key in an internal dictionary that each Xamarin Forms view will use. So in my bindable property definition, I've got the name of my property, I've got the type my property is, and I've also got the, the type it's assigned to. So in this case, button text is associated with the image button. And also I've got the default value for that particular property here. So I'm using the, the bindable property.create and, and linking those details together. Now in addition to that, I've also got my button text property on the image button. And you'll notice that this is not a static property, this is an actual property on an instance of the image view. And it's got a getter and a setter. And the getter is really just calling the get value from the button text property. So it's using that as the key to access the, the value associated with that particular static property. If one value hasn't been assigned, well, it'll return the default value from this button text static property. And likewise, when I set the text, it will set the value associated with that button text static property in the internal dictionary. So that's for the button text. Now likewise, if I scroll down, you can see I've also got the same details implemented for the image source. I've created an image source property. I've called it source. It's of type image source. It's assigned to the image button. And I've also got the default value here too. And then I've got my source, and it's doing the same thing essentially retrieving values from the internal dictionary or setting values to the internal dictionary. Now in addition to having those properties, I also need to be able to link those properties to the inner controls of my content view. Now for this image button example, we we're going to link the properties we've defined on the controls using direct binding by using a set binding method call on the inner control. So here's my inner label, and I'm calling set binding on the text property of that label to be linked to the button text property of this content view. And likewise, I'm doing a similar thing on the, the inner image. So I'm binding to the source property, but when the, the source property of this content view updates, well, that will be assigned to the source property of the inner image. So this is really just a proxying mechanism to the inner controls of our content view. Now, if I look at the page that's referencing this control, now obviously it's within my local namespace. I've got an XML namespace here called local and that's linking to my forms control example namespace within my project. And I'm referencing this local image button and you can see here I'm setting the button text to click me and the source to this image here camera icon. And I should be able to go ahead and, and run this and then see the details present. Okay, so here I've got my application running. I'm going to click on the, the page that I'm using for the image button. And then you can see my, my icon. It's got the text, click me, and I'm also using the camera icon. And that's for Android. Now let's run it on iOS as well. And you can see, again, it's presenting the same way. We've got that outer frame, we've got the small border radius, we've got the image being used as well as the text. So that's pretty great. Now, if you are creating components, chances are you'll also want to add the ability for those controls to have some behavior added into them. So at a minimum, you should be exposing events for clients of your controls to subscribe to. So in this case, when we're adding, we're going to add an event. In this case, we're adding an event called clicked. And the behavior we want is that when the user clicks on that control, we want to invoke the event to notify event subscribers. For our image button, what we might need to do here is to add a tap just to recognize it on the system. And then when we receive that tap, then we'd fire the event internally. So if I scroll up here, you can see I've got my event definition for the event handler called clicked. And when I'm constructing the control, I might need to scroll down a little bit here. You can see after I've got my bindable linkage set up, I'm also adding a tap just to recognize it to that control. There's a few things that I'm doing here with the tap gesture recognizer. You can see when the, the gesture recognizer is connected, if the clicked event is assigned, it'll invoke that particular event. Now there's also something else underneath as well. 
So while events are great, there's also a lot of Xamarin developers that prefer to use the MVVM architectural style. So in order to support behavior in this way, we'd also need to add a bindable command property or type of I command, as well as a command parameter of type object. And this would allow users to be able to invoke the right behavior within their view models. But the events and commanding are not mutually exclusive. The client of your control should use one technique or both. So ideally you should support both like what you can see here. So what you can see here is that once the, the tap gesture recognizer has recognized that a tap has occurred, it will trigger the event. And then if the command property is assigned, then we'll also check on that command. Can we execute that command? If we can, then we'll execute it and pass in the parameter. So this command property and this command parameter, these are actually properties that are exposed from the object in exactly the same way we're exposing the, the text and the image source for this control. So here you can see my command property. This time it's of type I command assigned to the image button and its default value is null. Now we've got the command property as well using the same linkage to the internal dictionary. Likewise I've got the command parameter property and it's of type object assigned to the image button with a value of null assigned. So this is a nice way to support all different kinds of developers. And now that we've got the, the linkage in place here, I should be able to head back to the simulator. You can see I've got the, the click me code. Let's actually have a look at the, the client page. So I'm using the, the show image button here with command page. If I look at the, the code, I'm binding to the my command. I've got a, a view model that I'm assigning up to it, the example view model. Let's have a look at that one. And it's really just got a static message property and a simple command. And when you click on the command, it'll just update the status message property. Now on my show image button with command, I've got the, the image button and below, I've got a label which is binding to the static message property of that view model. Now if I run the application and click on the button, there you can see that the status message has been updated. So that's a nice little example of exposing that functionality. So that's great. We've been able to create a nice simple control using existing Xamarin form controls as the building blocks and also be able to hook in events and also MVVM commands. Now, one of the reasons you might want to create custom controls is to really create something extremely unique. So you might want to create a gauge control or something like a timeline. For more graphical style controls like this, you might want to use a popular Xamarin Forms framework called Skiersharp. Now, in this next section, we'll touch on how you can bring them together to create a custom gauge control using Skiersharp. And there's plenty of controls that already use Skiersharp, including controls like Microcharts, which is a popular open source charting library. So let's take a quick look at the microcharts library just to demonstrate you what you might be able to achieve. So here's a sample of what can be done. So here's an example of microcharts, which is built on the, the Skiersharp framework, running in an iPad and also an iPhone. Oh, you can also run on Android as well and UWP and also Mac OS. And these are just Xamarin Forms controls that we've added in. And you can see that we've added a reference to microcharts or its corresponding assembly and namespace and we're referencing the individual controls in this. It's actually not too difficult to bring into your own project. There's some great resources available for microcharts so I would encourage you to check it out. Now Skiersharp is also a really great framework and we're not going to go too much into depth on the framework. There's plenty of great videos outlining how it can be applied. On the screen you'll see a range of links available that you can get started with Skiersharp. In particular, I'd recommend watching the Charles Petzold video from the Xamarin University Presents series. It goes through all you would need to do to start working with Skiersharp at a fundamental level. So while Skiersharp is an excellent cross-platform drawing component set, creating a, a custom control with it really means that you're creating a class that inherits from SK Canvas View and then override one of its important methods on Paint Surface. And it's actually that method where you'll be doing all the custom drawing. But the information you supply to that custom drawing will come from the properties that you define. Now typically, I would have my on paint surface. This would be the method that I'm using the skier sharp controls to do the custom drawing. And I'd also use a collection of bindable properties to reflect the attributes of the control that I want to create. So in the case of the gauge, I have properties like the value, 
so the value represents what's the position of the gauge at that point in time. I have the start value, the end value, which represent the range of possible values. And there's also some values for a highlighted range and some properties to represent the actual colors that are being used. Now the way I process these properties is that when any of the values that affect the display change, I redraw the control using the invalidate surface method of the SK Canvas view. And if I scroll down here a little bit further, you'll see a very important method. It's all the way down the bottom called on property changed. So when any of the bindable properties change, that will cause the control to need to update itself. It will call the invalidate surface method. So a lot of those values, a lot of those properties that I've created, things like the value, start value, end value, when they change, I obviously want to redraw the control. But even some of the controls like the width and the height of the control, when they change, now obviously I'll need to change that too. The device might be rotated or the, the device might be running in a split screen mode. Now of course you'd, you'd have events and commands added to that control if that made sense. And applying that with your design skills, you can create whatever style of visual control you'd like to make. So I've got a very simple gauge that's doing some custom drawing. In fact, let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like in action. So here's our gauge being displayed. I've got the gauge. I've also got the, the value bound to the, the value property of this slider. So as I change the slider, well, you can see the value of the gauge changing and, and repainting and updating itself. So Ski Sharp works really well in, in that regard. And if I quickly go ahead and, and launch this on Android, now here we can see that the gauge running, and again I've got the same user interface, and it's performing the, the same action. Now part of the fundamentals of working with Skia Sharp is making sure you've got the right details and it comes down to getting things like the dimensions of the display, getting a reference to the canvas, creating the paint objects to represent the colors, and then using the drawing primitives such as draw rect, draw circle, draw line, draw path, draw text, amongst many others to get the display that you're after. And you can see some snippets of the code here showing how we're doing things like filling in the background color of the control. To make it even easier to generate this code, there's a tool called the Kimono Designer available at the GitHub link that you can see on the screen that helps you generate the Skia Sharp code that you can then paste into your control or even application. So let's open up that tool. Okay, so here I've got the Kimono Designer running and you can see I've got some drawing primitives here on the left and as I draw them in, you can see that it's generating some nice C-sharp code for us to use. And in fact, it's using all the right Ski-sharp types, things like SK color. It's creating the, the rectangles themselves, creating the paint objects, and doing the appropriate drawing too. So it's doing the, the drawing of the outline as well as the fill. And as I add more primitives onto the display, well, it'll create the code for those too. And over time, you can essentially position all these controls nicely, you can set properties on them as well. Here I've got the star, I can change the position, I can rotate it slightly, I can change some points, use some styling. There's lots of great mechanisms for it. I can even select the, the platform that I'm designing it for. So if I want to use cross-platform, I'll select that option. I can look at the, the color properties and essentially design the control how I want to use it and use this information to write less code within my custom control. So I hope that this has demonstrated some of the neat ways we can create custom controls in Xamarin Forms without the need for renderers. So to summarize, make sure you create the appropriate property types for your controls, which are bindable properties for Xamarin Forms. Don't forget to link your bindable properties if you're creating a control using a content view, and make sure you monitor for property changes and react by updating your control. And also, make sure you take some time to look at some of the great open source projects like Xamarin Forms or Microcharts, because there's always a lot of useful techniques to learn. So thank you for watching this lightning lecture video. My name's Glenn Stevens, and it's been an absolute pleasure taking you through this topic. Now don't forget to check out our other lightning lecture videos, and I hope to see you again on one of our Xamarin University classes.